Okay then my friends, so in the last lesson we made a factory file for the Ninja model which generates dummy data for us when we use it. And that's a nice bit of automation for us which saves us a lot of time I guess. But there's one more bit of automation I want to show you before we move on and that is using something called seeders. So a seeder allows us to automatically use a factory for a model when we use it alongside a migration to seed the table with initial data once it's been created. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the point in that? Because we've already run a migration to make the table and we've already run the factory to populate it with data. So why do we now need a seeder to do something we've already effectively done? Well, when you're developing an application, it's quite common to make changes to your models and tables as you progress. For example, at some point, I might want to add a new column to the ninjas table. And so I'd want to run that migration to add it. Or I might completely restructure the table plus other tables for other data resources. And in that case, I might want to roll right back to the start to run all of my updated migrations from the beginning again to give me a fresh set of tables. Now, when we do that, all the data in those tables gets deleted because we're dropping the tables and rebuilding them. And so if we'd have to open Tinker and rerun the factories that we want for data again, that would get pretty tedious as we're making those changes, especially if we're changing the database tables quite frequently. So seeder files give us a way to say, look, when you run a migration, also run the seeders for the migration. And in turn, the seeders use the factories to automatically populate the table with data. Now, if you think back a couple of lessons to when we generated the model file, we also asked Artisan to generate a seeder file by using that little S flag. And we can find that seeder file inside the database directory and then in the seeders folder. It's this file right here called ninja seeder. Inside that file, we can see a class called ninja seeder, which has a run method defined. So when we use a seeder, it's this run method that actually gets called and it's in here that we can use the factory to generate the records. So remember, we can do that by saying the model first, which is ninja, and then we use a class method called factory, then a method called count to say we want to generate 50 records, and then on that we can use the create method. Now currently, you're going to see an error when we try to use the ninja class, and that's because we need to use the model namespace in this file, otherwise it doesn't know what it is. So to do that, we can come up here and just say use, then it's app, then a backslash, then models, and then a backslash, and then ninja. And now once you've done that, the error should go away. Okay, so that's all we really have to do in this file, but there's one more thing we need to do, and that is to call this seeder from the database seeder file, which is part of the starter Laravel project. So in this file, you can see it's just another seeder class, but this is the only seeder that automatically runs when we use a command, which we'll see later. So within the run function here, you can see that we already use the user factory to populate the user table with a single record. But now below that, I also want to call the ninja seeder I just created so that it generates ninja records as well. To do that, I can just say dollar sign this, and then I'm going to use a method on that called call. And as an argument, we pass in an array which contains other seeder classes we want to call. So I can say in here, ninja seeder, and then a double colon, and then class. And when we write this class here, it basically gives Laravel a full reference to the seeder class within the, na uh, the ninja seeder namespace. Now, we could have just used the ninja factory directly in this database seeder class, much like we call the user one right here. But when you're working with lots of different types of data and logic, it's often helpful to split those things out into separate seeders to keep the logic more manageable. Anyway, now that's the seeder set up, but how do we use them? Well, remember, I said before that sometimes we might make changes to the database tables at some point or the columns of data or the models, etc. And it might be that we just want to roll back all the migrations or more effectively, just drop all the tables and go back to the original starting point of the application and start them with a fresh migration to get all the tables up and running again, along with any of the changes that you made to them. Now, I'm not going to make any changes to the model or the table columns or anything like that, but I am going to show you how we can run a command to drop all of your database tables and start with a fresh migration batch, just in case you need to do it at some point. And alongside this, because all the data currently in the tables is going to get deleted, we're also going to use the seeder to populate the data for us when the tables are rebuilt. So then to do this, we can open up the terminal and we're going to type php artisan migrate and then a column 
and then we can say fresh and this tells artisan to drop all the tables made up until this point and essentially start with a fresh database and then run the migration files again all at once to remake the tables according to current specifications outlined in the migration files as they are now then we're going to add on a seed flag by typing a double dash and then the word seed and this tells Artisan to fire the run method inside the database seeder class. In turn, that now calls our new ninja seeder, which then uses the ninja factory to populate the ninja table with 50 new records. So you'll probably find yourself doing things like this a lot when you're making Laravel applications in the future. You'll make a model with a migration file, a factory file, and a seeder file. And you'll set those up so that whenever you need to run a fresh migration batch, you can easily populate the tables with data from the get-go. All right then, so now let's hit enter and see if it works. Okay, so it looks like everything's worked, but let me just go to the database itself. I'm gonna refresh over here. We see the ninjas table, so it's rebuilt that. And yes, we can see we should have 50 records inside it because we seeded the table using that Ninja Seeder, which in turn, like I said, uses the factory to generate all of these random column values. Awesome.